Like I was noting at the end of the second video, pivot tables are generally a topic in every statistics final exam. Uh, so there's something that you really need to know. Problems involving pivot tables and contingency tables. Let's say I love I love to talk ice cream and, uh, and ice cream trucks. So let's consider the following data from an ice cream truck operator. Specifically, the information of the area of town of the customer and the number of Choco Tacos ordered when the truck stopped. If you've never had a Choco Taco, you got to try one. It's basically a taco with ice cream and chocolate on it. And the taco is not a taco shell like you would think of. It's more like a waffle cone. So it says, if you choose a customer at random, find the probability that the customer is from the south side, from the south side and ordered two or more Choco Tacos from the south side or ordered two or more Choco Tacos from the east side given that the customer on, ordered only one. Well you gotta have the pivot table. There it is. If they do not give you the totals, remember that you will have to total it. In most cases they will give you the totals, but looking at this pivot table what we have here is three sides of town, the south, the north, and the east and the number of Choco Tacos that a customer bought. In other words, 17 did not buy a Choco Taco at the uh, ice cream truck. Perhaps they bought the creamsicle. Uh, five on the south side bought one. Three people bought two or more. North side, same, same situation, zero, one, two or more. And with a pivot table, I can see the total number of uh, customers there on the south side, the north side, the east side, and I can also see the total number of cost customers who did not buy any Choco Tacos, who bought one, and who bought two or more. These totals down at the bottom should add from left to right, get 131, and get the same sum as what these totals add from top to bottom get 131 so I know there were 131 customers here all right what's the probability that a customer is from the south side well there were 25 total customers from the south side so it would be 25 out of 131 or the decimal form 0 0.1908 now what about this what is the probability that a customer was from the south side and ordered two or more Choco Tacos South side in. Three, that's saying, well, if I randomly pick somebody, what is it, the probability if that they are from the south side and got two or more? That would be three out of 131. You have to, you have to be careful with these. Now, what about the probability of the south side or ordered two or more tacos? Now, the or with a pivot table is really easy. I look at the total of the south side, 25. The total of the two or more is 27. So I say 25 plus 27 minus the 3. 25 plus 27 minus 3 divided by 131. Why do I subtract out the 3? Because I counted it twice when I was totaling the two or mores and when I was totaling the south side. So it's the south side plus the two or more, minus the overlap, so I don't count them twice. So my probability would be 49 out of 131, or the decimal form. Finally, the toughest type question, and it's really the easiest type question, is when you're given that. They like to go in and say, given that. When you see that on a pivot table or contingency table type question, they are simply changing the denominator from the east side, given that the customer only ordered one taco. They are telling you, only consider the ones that ordered one. So we're only dealing with 23 people. So from the east side, given they only ordered one, that's 7 out of 23. All right, but note, if they said, what is the probability they ordered one Choco Taco given that they were from the east side? If it was given they were from the east side, they're saying the denominator is 57. So it'd be 7 out of 57. Given that they got one Choco Taco, 
is 23. So be careful on these. They're easy to do. And just remember, when you see the term given that, know that your denominator is going to change. The binomial, the Poisson, and the geometric distributions, hopefully in your undergraduate statistics class, you learned about all of these. And you can almost always count on these types of questions. Understand when you use each. In other words, what's the difference between a binomial, a Poisson, and a geometric distribution? Understand how to use technology. Yeah, you know, the formulas are always given, but you need to either be able to use your calculator, an Excel spreadsheet, some type of statistical software. Also, understand that these are discrete distributions. Uh, the binomial, the Poisson, and the geometric, whereas, say, the normal distribution is a continuous distribution. Binomial, a typical type of binomial question. A new type of drug has a 75% chance of success on patients with a particular illness. The drug is given to three patients. Find the probability the drug is successful on exactly two of the patients, at least two, more than one. You know, in that problem, they give you P, which is 0.75 or 75%. They give you N, 3. And then you should be able to get all of those probabilities very easily. If you're familiar with the stat cave, you know that I have, uh, I have a calculator where I showed you how to do some of these. With the Poisson, with the Poisson, they only give you a mean. It says a population count count re reveals that the average number of voles in homeowners yards is 3.6. A vole is a little bitty type of mole. I have them in my front yard. I like to talk about voles a lot. Find the probability that seven voles are found in any given homeowners yard. With the Poisson you only need the average or the mean and you can go to town using a calculator, Excel, or some other statistical package. Now, with the geometric distribution, quarterback Bobby Bazinga completes 75% of his passes, okay? Find the probability that the first completion Bobby makes is on his third or fourth attempt, or find the probability the first uh, uh, completion is on his second attempt. With the geometric, you're looking for the first occurrence, or the probability that the first occurrence happens on the blanked time, or the nth time, or the third time, or the second time. Or it could be worded like above, on the third or fourth time. With a geometric dis distribution question, knowing the p-value is enough if you have Excel, a calculator, or some other type of statistical software. Now, with the normal distribution, I think I'm going to wait here. Okay, I think I have enough time to continue with this video. Understand the normal distribution and, and how it relates to the standard normal table, z-scores, things like that. You're always asked to calculate z-scores. You Now, if given just, let's say you're given a mean and a standard deviation and asked to calculate the z-score for a certain value, let's say if we have um, a mean of 10, a standard deviation of 5, Calculate the, the Z value or the Z score for uh, a value of 20. I would say that value, 20 minus the mean, 10. 20 minus 10 divided by the standard deviation of 5. 20 minus 10 is 10 divided by 5 is 2. So the Z score would be 2.00. Now, if you're asked to find probabilities or things like that, you can use a table. Many students are pushed to use tables on these types of questions, but it is so easy if you have a calculator, know how to use the normal distribution, have Excel, know how to use it. I've got a normal distribution calculator that I have shared that works these problems very well. Like if I'm, I'm doing a, a z-score type problem, remember that it is the standard normal, so for one of those I would put in a mean of zero, standard deviation of one, Let's look at a typical problem with the normal distribution. Families spending on groceries in the town of Dullesville are normally distributed with an average of $278.35. And let's say that's probably per week or per month, whatever. And a standard deviation of 29.28. 
Find the probability a family spends less than $250, more than $300, between $260 and $310. Find the 90th percentile. Find the third quartile. Well, if you've got technology, say like the normal distribution calculator that I have shared and you will find on my website, you would put in the mean and the standard deviation and then you're ready. But there's more video help on my site for this. Like on the first one, here, the probability that it's less than $250 after putting in my mean and standard deviation, I would enter a 250 here. Make sure you hit the enter key anytime you put anything in a cell. Never touch the cells that are not green. So the probability would be 0.1665. And you see the purple jello here is to the left. So I'm finding the probability that it's less than that value. On this middle one, the purple jello is to the right. So I'm finding the probability that's to the right of this value. So greater than or more than 300, the probability would be 0.2298. What about between two values? No problem. Use the, four, the third one over here and say between 260 and 310, the probability is 0.5947. Okay. At the bottom of this calculator, if you haven't seen it before, just look around my site. You'll find the normal distribution calculator. There is some blue jello type calculations, I call them, where you can do the inverse. Things like finding the 90th percentile. The inverse calculations are right below the purple calculations. So find the 90th percentile. Uh, that would be to the left here. And I would put in a 0 0.9 or 0 0.90, it's the same thing, it's the 90th percentile is 315.87. What that is saying is that 90% of the families spend less than $315.87. Over here, I could find the top 10th percentile. In other words, if I were to, looking at this, if I were to put in a 0 0.1 right here, it would give me 315.87 right here because the 90th percentile and the top 10 percent per top 10th percentile is the same thing the exact same thing now quartiles just to understand that the third quartile is the same as the 75th percentile so the uh, third quartile for this data would be 298.10 if they asked me for the first quartile I would have put in 0.25 easy enough. Confidence intervals and sample sizes. I think I'm going to continue this on the next video.